Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In this lecture, we will discuss about the methods developed for predicting protein secondary structures. In the last class, we discussed about regular secondary structures. What are the regular secondary structures? Alpha releases, beta strands, turns, right, and the regular structure we can call as coil, right. How the alpha releases are formed? By I and I plus four bond. Right, by the hidden bonds between NH and CO groups right in the main chain right i and i plus 4 right this alpha helix then we have two different types of helices what are the two types of helices keratin helix and the alpha oh. helix right then the beta strand right you can also see the hidden warning pattern between the the i mean c n h and c o groups there are two types of beta strand, beta strands one is a parallel and another is anti parallel right and you can see the difference in the hidden warning patterns in the parallel and the anti parallel beta strands then we discussed about turns, right? Three different types of turns, and type one turn is quite frequently occurring, right, in protein structures. Then we discussed about Ramachandran plot, right? What is Ramachandran plot? The plot between psi and psi. And plot connecting phi and psi, right? And he used the two dihedral angles, phi angle and psi angle, right? How many atoms are required to get the dihedral angle? Four. Four atoms, right? Because it is angle between two planes, right? Atoms one to three are one plane. 2, 3 and 4 are another plane. So, the angle between these two planes, right, that is called dihedral angles, right. So, here in the protein main chain, you can see the two types of dihedral angles, one is phi and one is psi. Phi is a rotation along C N and C alpha, right, N C alpha, right, and psi is a C alpha C. So, another one that is the peptide bond. So, Ramachandran, he tried to use these atoms, right, at the hot spheres and see the rotations which are allowed, right, which is avoid the steady hindrance. So, based on that he identified the regions where the alpha helices are populated, right, as well as where allowed regions for the beta strands. So, he developed the plot, right, and that plot is called the Ramachandran plot. Then if we know the structures of proteins, right, based on the hidden warning pattern, Hapson standard, right, so developed algorithm, what is the algorithm? DSSP, right, distinctive of secondary structure proteins to assign the secondary structures for each residues. Then, if you have the experimental data, then we can utilize the information to develop different models for predicting the secondary structures. Now, there are several methods we discussed, right. So, one of the earliest one that is based on the statistical analysis. Chavan Fassman, first he tried to analyze the preference of amino acid residues in each secondary structure. Which is the values he developed? Propensity. Propensity, right? How to get the propensity values? So there will be division of. Right. First, for the any any residues, right? So in in any specific conformation, right? Alpha helix divided by Ni number of residues in the protein, right? Then you can see the N alpha. That is the number of residues. Right, this way. So this is for the any residue i. Here this is for the whole protein. If the any residue i it prefers to alpha helix, then it will have higher values, right? Depending upon the total number of residues in alpha helix. Is it correct? So likewise you can get the value for the any specific residue. This is only only this is for the a i stands for 20 residues, right? You can get the values for 20 residues. From that information, you can see the residues. Right, whether the propensity is more than one or less than one. If it is more than one, then it is preferred in alpha helix. If it is less than one, it is not preferred in alpha helix. So today we will discuss about the other methods. I discussed about the five different methods I mentioned. What are the other methods? Information. Based on information theory, this is called the GOR method, and hydrophobicity profiles, MS3. multiple sequence alignment, neural networks, right, and the consensus method, right? The join methods, you can say that. Okay, this lecture we will discuss the different other methods to predict the secondary structures and the performance of these methods. We will do the Chavan Bassman method using statistical analysis, 
you can identify the segments, but the accuracy is about 60 percent, 55 to 60 percent. So, here they considered the propensity of each residue to be in any secondary structure, either alpha helix or beta strand. Now, with that information, Garnier, Rastogrub, and Robson, right, they try to use the information for the central residue as well as the neighboring residues. Why it is required? Because there are some segments, say any pentapeptides or exapeptides, or even tetrapeptides, the same peptides they can adopt different secondary structures, right. For example, if you see a segment A, E, I, V, K, they can be in helix, they can also be in the strand. In this case, if you use this segment, the high propensity in helixes and strand, this can be difficult to distinguish. So, Garnier they try to get the information for the central residues as well as the residues which are occurring nearby the central residue. So, they collect the information for example, if this is the central residue, they consider the propensity of that particular residue isolation in helix for example, and see the neighboring residues about the propensity of the neighboring residues on both sides of the central residues. So, they derived some sort of frequency matrices and use the information for prediction, right. Because they use many several information, they call this theory as the information theory, because they develop the method based on the information of that particular residue. They consider central residue and they use 8 neighbors from left side and right side, right. This number of neighboring residues depends, we can use any window length and see finally, which window length provides the optimal highest performance, right. Then we can fix it, right. So, you can use it for 3, 5, 7, several window lengths, right. I can optimize to get the window lengths with the highest performance. So, they use 8 neighbors, if it is 8 neighbors, what will be the window length? 17. 17, right, because 8 plus 1 plus 8, right. This is the central one, this is on the left side, this is on the right side, right, in terminal C terminal side. So, 17 residues and they consider 4 different states, right. They consider helix stand, turn and coil. So, four different states they considered. How they derived the information? So, they developed a formula to obtain the information content for some highest information content for any secondary structure right and any any particular residue right. So, here you can see any residue i, this can be any secondary structure for, for example, this x, this can be helix right. So, preference of that particular residue in helix over the same residues which is not in helix, right. This is the negation there is uh, which one is the residues which are not in their particular secondary structure. So, how to get this information? They use this, this particular formula that is logarithmic of the probability of any particular residue to be in helix, right. This is for example, if you take the helix and the probability of the residue which is not in helix. minus because this is considered only for that particular residue. Now, we have like to have investment, we have to normalize with the whole protein. So, in this case the whole protein they take the residues in helix and the residues which are not in helix. So, for any residue with any particular secondary structure, they try to use the information that whether that residues right prefer to be in a particular secondary structure over the other secondary structures as well as that secondary structure over other not other than that particular secondary structure. So, here you can see this SSI is a secondary structure at a position i in the sequence and x is any secondary structure they can do it for 4 different secondary structures right helix, strand, a coil and the turns and A A stands for any amino acid residue right you can use this equation to get the preference of see any residues. So, how they derive the probability right which, which information is required to derive the, the probability okay. we need experimental data right because if you have only the sequences right if you know only the input sequences then we do not know whether the residue alanine prefers to be in helix or stand we do not know. In this case we need experimental data. So, they collected the experimental data with known secondary structure information for example, the structures are known 
then you can use the DSSP, it can take the head and information and the assign secondary structures. DSSP uses 8 classifications, but we can simplify into 4 classes based on by combining all the helices as one helix like alpha helices, beta uh, pi helices and the tritium helices makes one group called the helix. So, they consider the proteins with non secondary structures right with the secondary structure assignment right. Then we know the assignment right we know the sequence and for each sequence we know the secondary structure assignment right particular tube belongs to helix or strand or coil or turn. Then we calculate the frequency of each amino acid in each of the window positions for example, if you have the window position 17 what is the preference of residue at x, x minus 1, x minus 2, x minus 3 and so on. Likewise x plus 1, x plus 2 and x plus 3. So, they have 17 residue positions and calculate the frequency of each amino acid for each secondary structures right. So, they can develop some matrices. So, you can see the 17 by 20 matrix. Okay, 17 stands for these are positions right 17 positions and 20 stands for 20 amino acids right they can calculate. So, now they use this matrix right to calculate the probability as well as information content because this matrix contains information about the preference of any particular residue at different positions. 17 positions right. So, this matrix can be used to obtain the probability of any new residue to be at any particular position that depending upon the secondary structure. So, now they calculate total information content for each state for example, take helix they use this information what is the preference of that particular residues to be in helix compared to be not in helix. Then do the same for strand and you can do the same for the turn and the same for the coil then we will how many values we will get 4 values, four values right if you have the 4 second uh, secondary structures helix strand uh, turn or coil. So, we get 4 different values here you will get x 1 x 2 x 3 x 4 and they take this 4 and from this which one is the preferred secondary structure the maximum. So, maximum of this x 1 x 2 x 3 x 4 right this will give you the preferred secondary structure right this is the principle used in Garnier's method ok I will explain with one example. For example, if you have a protein with 1800 residues or a set of proteins with 1800 residues A10 are in helix and 990 are not in helix that means 990 are span, spanning to different secondary structures either strand or coil or turn then you take in a particular structure alanine. So, there are 300 alanine right, this for example right, right this is not exact number this I put for example. So, 210 are in helix and 90 are not in helix using this information we can derive the information content right for example, the probability of particular SD alanine in helix right this is alanine in helix right what is the probability totally how many residues? 300 alanines right we are talking about alanines. So, with 300 alanines how many alanines in helix 210. So, this you can calculate the ratio this will be 0 0.7 then you can see the same residue alanine which are not in helix right which is not in helix this is negation. So, you can use it how many heli, uh, I mean alanines are not in helix 90, 90 right so, therefore, 90 divided by 300 residues. So, here you can calculate the probability of alanine which are not in helix that is 0 0.3 right. Now, this is for a particular residue then go with the full residue full proteins right all the residues right. So, here if it is any secondary structure helix how many residues are in helix 810 right. If you take 810 so normalize with the total residues 1800 this will be 0 0.45. Now, the, the how many residues which are not in helix. So, you can see 990 divided by 1800 this is 0.55. We use this information right to get the probability of alanine to be in alpha helix so, this is called the information content. So, you can see the probability of alanine in helix which is given as logarithmic of 0 0.7 by 0 0.3 this is for alanine and here this is for the whole protein.
So, now if you calculate this, this equal to 0 0.847 minus this logarithmic is minus 0 0.2. So, if you subtract then finally, we get the value of 1.047. From this number we can say whether this alanine prefers to be in helix or not. So, it prefers to be helix or not? Yes. Yes. Right. If the value is more than 0, then it is prefers to be helix. If it is less than 0, it is not to be preferred helix. For example, if you have 300 residues, 300 alanines, 150 in helix and 150 is not in helix. Likewise, 1800, you can put 900 in helix and 900 in not in helix. Right. For example, if you put this is 900, this is 900. Here also, if you put uh, 150, 150. So, then what is the value we get? Logarithm graph, this value will be right 1, right minus ln of 1, right this will be 0. So, if it is equally preferred, that is not just 150, 150, if the ratio is same, right, it is not the exactly same number, right. For example, here 100 and, 100 uh, and 200, likewise here also if you see the ratio of 2 is to 3, right, that is fine. So, if you do this, then we get the value of 0. This will tell you that for if it is randomly distributed, that means the distribution is same in the full protein level as well as any residue level, then we will get the value of 0. So, if it is more than 0, right, then we will get this is the preferred ones. If it is less than 0, right, you can see it is not preferred in any particular secondary structure. So, here I show the matrix, one of the examples. So, this is one matrix for the alpha helix. That you can see this is an alpha helical conformation. So, this is the central position J. So, how many window lengths they used? 17. 17, right. So, you can the value values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, likewise here also 8. So, 8 plus 8, 16 plus central 1, this is equal to 17. This varies from J minus A to J plus 8. For example, this is the sequence A, K, T, S, V, right. So, if we take this is a central residue J this is j plus 1, this is j minus 1 and so on. Right? You can see the 8, 7 residues this side and 7 residue, 8 residues here and 8 residues there. This is a matrix. If you see the matrix, we can see the preference of some specific residues. For example, to the jth position, right? which residues are preferred in j? So, if you see the plus, that is preferred ones. You can see plus values here. Right? So, this plus value corresponds to alanine this is 65. So, here this 14, this corresponds to valine and here 32, this corresponds to leucine. So, you can see the glutamic acid here, this is glutamic acid. So, this is 78 glue. So, from this one which residues are preferred at the central position? Alanine, valine, leucine, glutamic acid. This is similar to the propensity obtained by Chavan Basman. Yesterday we discussed the previous class we discussed about the propensity of residues, right. We could see the preference of these residues say glutamic acid, alanine, valine, leucine, they prefer to be in alpha helix, right. In this case the propensity is agrees with the Chavan Basman method, so the data seems to be fine. Now, here they added more information regarding neighboring residues for example, J minus 1, J minus 2 and see some cases is they do not have any preferences and some cases you can see the preferences. Say glycine is not preferred at any position, it is totally random. So, we see alanine is preferred at the J as well as other positions and some cases you can see the preference at some positions are not in the other, 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 other uh, positions. So, we can use this matrix to get the information. So, how many matrices they derived? This is for helix. Okay. Four, four matrices, right? One for helix, one for strand, and turn and coil. So now we have the sequence. So this amino acid sequence, and how we obtain the information content using Garnier, and how they transferred the data to predict the secondary structures. For example, if you take the central residue, this three one n. So these are the different windows. You can see seventeen residue windows. So if you from here to here, right? So there's seventeen residues. And you substitute the values from the table. For example, if alpha helix for T, T is central one. What is the value for 3 on N? T is here, this is the central value, this is this is equal to minus 26, 
right we put minus 26 here then take this j minus 8 right j minus 8 is which residue methionine so go with the methionine methionine is here this j minus 8 this is 10 put the value 10 this is j minus 7 j minus 7 is valine so if you see here the valine j minus 7 that is equal to 0 that is equal to 0 then go with the j plus 8 j plus 8 is lysine so if you see the lysine what is the three letter code for lysine l y s right is here so lysine is here so this value is 0 right so it is 0 so now we have 17 values for the 17 positions right that is the difference between Garnier and Chavan Fassman. Chavan Fassman use only this 3 1 n right. So now get the values and sum up all the numbers then we will get the value of the any window length right. So this is not the correct one so this for example we put plus 4 right this is for example. So if you add up these numbers right finally for example if you say the value is plus 4 now this prefers to be alpha helix but we do not know whether it prefers alpha helix compared with other secondary structures for example if you get the beta sheet to 15 or 20 right then that means the preference for beta strand is more than alpha helix. So in this case what we have to do we have to, we have to repeat for different secondary structures this is for the helix so we have to do for the strand coil and turn. So we get 4 numbers so from the 4 numbers choose the best and assign okay, this residue is in alpha helix. Likewise, you can assign the values for all the uh, sequence and we get based on the preference we can assign different secondary structures and at the end we can do some n corrections right for example there are 6 or 7 residues which is continuously predicted helix in between there is a strand then you can take this whole segment as an helix that we can make some n corrections compared with the experimental data right to improve the performance of the method. This method also can predict with an accuracy of about 65 percent. So then the other methods so we can talk about hydrophobicity profiles. So what is hydrophobicity profile we discussed the earlier classes what is hydrophobicity profile is a plot connecting the amino acid residues with respect to hydrophobicity values. We can use any hydrophobicity scales I will discussed about a particular scale right here you can see the hydrophobic residues have more values and the polar residues have less values. So, when you plot these values right we can see a pattern right they identified some specific patterns for helix or strand or coil or turn as we know the helices 3.6 residues per turn and if these residues are ambi in ambivathic right spanning in two different phases right then two in one phase and two another phase based on that they derived a specific type of patterns this can work only if the helices are ambipathic in nature if the helices are not ambipathic then we cannot see this pattern in this case you can the methods will fail right in this case we need to add more information right but if the helices are ambipathic in nature then they can easily identify the helical segments based on the patterns generally in the full all protein structures about 70 to 75 percent of residues are ambipathic right the helices so they could be able to identify these segments then we go for the beta strand beta strand there are two different types of beta strands some beta strands it is completely buried right because the residues which are buried are in highly hydrophobic in nature so the mainly if you compare with the helices and strands strands are more hydrophobic than helix so these residues which are in strand they are highly hydrophobic and second one the beta strands are also in amphibathic in nature in this case you can see two phases and one phase you can see the hydrophobic residues and the other phase you can see the hydrophilic residues right. If it is an amphibathic nature or the exposed beta strand you can see a pattern which are shown in this figure right ok this is the pattern you can see. On the other hand if the residues are in the buried right and adopt the beta strand conformation you can see a pattern which are shown in the figure D right you can see most of the residues which are highly hydrophobic. So now if you have the patterns for helix and there are two different patterns for the strand based on the location of the strands whether it is in helix or whether it is not helix is whether in the exposed beta strand or it is the buried beta strand. Now there is another case this is for the turns, turns are generally hydrophilic 
like the like like loops because accommodated with the polar residues right in this case you can see a stretch of residues which are less hydrophobic so if they made these type of graphs based on the known information and the physical basis of how these proteins fold and what are the preference of this uh, different residues in secondary structures. This is not the statistical analysis, it is based on the characteristics of the residues in protein structures. So, if you have any sequence, right? For example, if you have the sequence, then we can make a profile, and if you have the profile, then from that profile you can identify the regions which have any of these patterns. Now, if you identify any specific patterns, then you can say okay, this could be helix and this could be strand and this could be a, a the coil or the buried beta strand or exposed beta strand and so on. This is one way. So, there are also different methods which can be used for predicting the secondary structure based on the average hydrophobicity, right? Because this is a single residue hydrophobicity, and you can see some such of residues as we discussed in the earlier classes. If there are one residue which are having different value, so then you do not get the patterns, the pattern will lose. In this case, you can get the average values and try to use the average value for predicting the secondary structures, right. So, I will explain how to do that. For any sequence, for example, if you have a sequence, you can make different window lengths. For example, if it takes window lengths of 8 residues take 1 to 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and the value is equal to i equal to 1 to n h i by n, h i by n. What is h i? This is hydrophobic value. So, you get the for each residue we have the value, it is here, assign the values and add up the values and divide by n. So, n equal to this segment this 8 is remains n equal to 8 right you can do that. So, we get the different values and can use these values to produce secondary structures. How to do this and how to assign these segments? In this case we see a protein and if you get the amino acid sequence it is possible to see whether this residue can contains more alpha helices or more beta states or it is a mixture of helices and strands. How to do this? If you have a sequence and we have the pattern right this is a pattern for the helix and see how many pattern the segments which has this pattern right take any sequence and make a plot and see how many segments we have this type of patterns. Then already we discussed about the preference of residues so one first one method. So, we know that some residues are preferred in alpha helix. If you take a minimum of 4 residues that is corresponds to one turn and see all the 4 residues are accommodated with the preferred residues like alanine, valine, glutamic acid and so. so. how many segments you can get with the preference of residues and how many overlaps with the particular profile and the preferred residues. If they could get many patterns then we can see this protein is mainly having lot of helices. In this case it is fine to identify the helical segments instead of doing all the secondary structures this first one and the second case they will also do the same pattern for the strands and see how many segments contain exposed beta strands and buried beta strand and use a Chavas 1 parameters. So, we know the preferred residues in beta strand take only preferred residues and see a segment of 4 residues and then see how many segments you can identify using preferred residues then we get the number of segments. Comparing these two if it is highly dominated by helical segments we see the protein contains mainly helices. If this contains mainly more number of beta strands right and we can see okay, this protein contains mainly beta strands and some cases you will have both 10 strand segments and then 15 beta strands uh, helical segments. In this case you can see this protein contain the mixture of both right this is how uh, we will see. Then if we can see a protein which is dominated by, by helices then we see that there will be many several helical segments. So, to identify the helical segments what to do first we get the window length of 8 residues and construct a plot. Okay, you can see these are two different examples for two different proteins right. So, here x axis is the sequence 1 means that means 1 to 8 average of 1 to 8 2 means average of 2 to 9 and the y axis is the hydrophobicity value average value and if you make the plot you can see there are several peaks right. 
several peaks. And if you see these peaks, some of them are very high from the average. For example, this is high, high peak and some peaks which are here just the low peak just above the average low peaks. So, if you see these two peaks and compare the known structures, you see there will be a longer segment with the corresponds to high peaks and shorter segments of helices in the lower peaks. So, then we see for example, if this is a region with 251 for example, then we can see that this is a means for 251 to 258 this belongs to helix. The lower peak for example, this is 202 this corresponds to shorter helix say 4 residues. So, this is 205 likewise we assign the secondary structures and then we can make the modifications to refine the end segments based on the preferred resolution in uh, at the end, pos end position and the C positions as well as the patterns where they have right this type of patterns. From that you can identify the regions which belong to helical segments. So, what first what we have to do? First we have to see whether the proteins are dominated with the helices or dominated with the beta strands or contains both right. How to do that? Take the 4 residue segments and see how many segments you can identify using preferred residues as well as the patterns in helices. Check for helix, check for strand. For example, helix has 25, strand has 2, then this protein belongs to the alpha helix proteins, predominant with the alpha helix. If beta strand is 20 and helix is 3, then we can say these proteins mainly dominant in beta strands. If helix equal to 10, strand equal to 15, right, or vice versa, right, then you can say it contains both mixture of that. If it is a helix, then we deal with the helical segments, we do not bother about the strand. So, get the average profile, make into two groups one is high peak and low peak. High peak stands for longer segments, low peak stands for the shorter segments, and we can find the incorrections, make the helical position regions. So, this is an example for the beta strand. So, here we use the window length of 4 residues because short beta strands are frequently occurring in protein structures. So, this way we take 4 again to make this plot and see there are several peaks. So, each peak represents a beta strand. For example, in this case it is 1, 1 2, 3, 4. If it is 4, then 4 to 7, that rest is 4 to 7 because. 4 SD segment. This corresponds to beta strand and then we can make the incorrection based on the preferred residues in the N terminal or the C terminal as well as the patterns right. If you have any patterns then you can extend the pattern till the pattern ends. So, likewise we can make the incorrections to identify the beta strands. So, now if it contains both helix and strands right. So, we have made the figure 1 for 8 residues which one is for 8 this is for 8 residues right and you can see the small one right this this figure ok this figure that is for the 4 residues one is for the helix one is for the strand. So, then we see the patterns many cases it is distinct one is here one is helix is here and the and the strand somewhere. So, helix and different distinct places. So, if you do so we can discriminate the occurrence of helices and strands. We can say some overlap between 4 s 2 and 8 s 2 segments. Then we can get the values and compare the numbers and say whether this can be a helix or the strand right. We can get this segment and see the average value based on the average value we can decide whether this can be a helix or this can be a strand. So, now there are three, three different ways based on the classes. So, can we can predict the secondary structures using heterophobicity profiles. Mm -hmm.